What's going on, guys? I'm Seb Thomas here, George D. Coach of the San Francisco Arcaniners. Now, today I have for you my team building video against none other than Super Blah with the Boston Red Sox. Red Sox, um, three and out, and we are two and one right now. So, this is a really important game for us to win. Really prove that we're a top team, and then put us on the level with Nick. Um, making him three and one, and us also three and one. Also keeping up with Miguel or Mega Magui, who is also two and one right now. Number one in our division, though. Um, <clears throat> we've had a few close games. Actually, all of our games have been close. So um, our differential isn't the greatest right now. Um, but we really need to step up to the plate, and the Arcaniners are ready to go. So without further ado, let me get into my team. Um, the first one I'm bringing is Bronzong. Who, if you guys do not know, Bronzong is actually a free agency I picked up instead of Togetic. Actually, I felt like Togetic was a little bit easy to easy to prepare for. And the thing I love about Bronzong is that it has two abilities: a great typing, and its two abilities have the ability to really trick up some people with Levitate and Heatproof. Um, I can wall the fire types, and then in a different battle, I can wall ground types. Um, and now this is an interesting set right here, as I don't know why that's there, but this is meant to be Stealth Rocks. Um, okay, but let me get into the spread right here. So I have a specially defensive Bronzong. Reason being is it can tank Tornadus, um, it can tank the Tyrantrum still, it can tank the Galvantula, um, Tank the Needle King, it can take a Fire Blast even from a modest Life Orb set. It takes like maybe 70% from it, and that's why I have the Zen Headbutt to deal massive damage back and then Revenge Kill. Um, it can take a hit off Manaphy if necessary, although I don't have moves to really hit Manaphy because I'm not really too worried about that. What is what is going on here? Where did Gyro Ball go? Why is it messing up for me? There we go, there we go. Please work now. Um, as well as it can get up the rocks early on now rocks early on is a big plan for me because he has a few things on his team that do not like rocks and his only way of removing his rocks is a, is the skarmory um now i have a little plan for cresselia and skarmory and the mega audino because i feel like against this team if i go into bronze on against let's say galvantula and he decides um he wants to set up the sticky web first and then both switch out i will get up my rocks but Later on in the game, maybe, or something like that. I don't know. Um, not early on to reveal it, but a little bit later on, if I predict his switch into Crest or Skarmory, this is Roost Father for, for him. Um, this is how he's going to heal up his mod. So I have the heal block on this thing, which prevents him from healing for five turns. Um, now, you guys may think this is a gimmick or something like that. I actually put a lot of thought into this. And at first, it was a filler move, just like, oh, I'm just going to... I'm going to throw this move on, and then I'll, sh I'll change it later on. When, in fact, I, I thought about it, and it's going to stay. Because if I predict the switch into Skarmory or Crest, because he's at, like, maybe 50%, wants to heal up, go for heal block, he takes rocks, takes more damage, and then I can switch and plan accordingly. So it's a little bit of an, of an interesting set, and a way I have of dealing with his Crest and Skarm in a unique way. Um, moving on, I like to build a core first, personally, so... I'm going to go to my Defensive Needle Queen right here. Defensive Needle Queen handles Galvantula, um, even though it's not especially defensive. Handles the Skarmory, because I have I have T-Bolt on it. Um, Mianxiao it handles, Armaldo it handles, Tyrantrum it handles to them f for the most part. Mega Audino, it can switch in and tank any hit for Mega Audino. Um, and my set right now is Protect, Earth Power, T-Bolt, and Toxic Spikes. Now, Toxic Spikes is a move I'm bringing. He has a Skarm, a Crest, a Needle King, and a Tornadus Eye, which means Toxic Spikes won't be affecting his team that much. However, what Toxic Spikes is going to do is force out his Needle King and his and, and also the Skarmory. Reason being is he's going to want to defog, as well as he's going to want to um, get rid of the Toxic Spikes with his Poison type if he can. And if he goes into Needle King on it, then I go into my Gothitelle, I tank a hit. And, well, I, you guys will see the plan later on. But um, I have T-Bolt for Skarmory and the Mana Fee. I have Earth Power as well as Tornadus. I, I have Earth Power for everything else. Um, the set can't really really deal with Cresselia that well, but 
to be honest, Cresselia, I have, I have other things for it, so I'm not too concerned about that. Now, moving on to my next Pokemon, I have my Choice Bandit Scizor. Um, Choice Bandit Scizor does a lot of work to his team. His team is really weak to Volt Turn, I realize, so my Scizor and my Rotom, which is the next Pokemon I'll be explaining, really combine well together against his team and synergize really well together. Um, so my set right now is the Bull Punch, the U-Turn, the Knock Off, and the Pursuit. Um, and I have enough speed to outspeed a Cresselia with like around like 20 investment, 24 investment, because I know Nick likes to speed creep the speed creepers by just a few hit, or just a few speed, as well as I know he's going to run HP fire on that thing. So I'm hoping with the spread right here, I'll be able to outspeed it. And then of course, if he's running a max speed crest or enough speed to outspeed an adamant max speed scissor, then I'm not going to outspeed anyway. So I feel like this was the safest spread. I have the Bullet Punch, which takes on the Mega Audino and priority against everything else. I have the U-Turn for the in the momentum and the initiative, because if I'm in on Cresselia and I outspeed it, he's going to want to go into Skarmory. I can U-Turn out and go into my Rotom, Volt Switch U-Turn, Volt Switch U-Turn, Volt Switch U-Turn, repeatedly until the game's over. Um, I, have the, I, have the, I have the Knock Off in case I want to knock something off the Skarmory, the Cresselia, if it's leftovers are being a pain in the ass. Um, Maybe also on the Manaphy or something like that. It's a life orb, and I know I can take a hit with my bronze on knockoff. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. But um, I have knockoff as well. It's a pretty pretty standard move to run on a bandit set. Now the last move is a special move. I have pursuit. Reason being, if I have pursuit, he might want to save his Priscilla if it's on maybe maybe forty to fifty percent. If I go for pursuit as he switches out, that's going to be doing around forty percent to it, and it'll die on the rocks. Also, it's going to weaken it in general. So. Pursuit after Technician has a 60 base power, when they switch out, it's a 120 base power move, and super effective is 240 base power. So, against a mom like Cresselia, that's a lot of damage that I can get off and possibly put him in range of Stealth Rocks or even in range of um, of the Heal Block Bronzong set coming into play there, um, really affecting him. Now, pretty slow response to it. I almost ran a Swords Dance set to be honest, but I decided against his team, especially against like his his Manaphy and everything. Nick is really good at keeping his Manaphy until the very end, until he knows he needs to send it in in order to sweep. Um, and if I have, a, I have a Swords Dancing Scizor, I can't guarantee that the Manaphy is going to be weak enough to where a plus two bullet punch is going to take it out, and he's probably going to have HP fire or just a skull or something like that. So, in my opinion, that's my best play. Um, so, I have the Bandit to deal with the Sneasel, Armaldo, the Mega Automo, the Tornadoes, Tyrantrum. Galvantula, it's low enough, Mian Shao, Needle King, Crest. The only thing I can't hit is the Skarmory and the Manaphy, really, and everything else it destroys on this team. Coming up next, I have is my Rotom. Um, another choice Scarf Rotom set with the with the Volt Switch, Shadow Ball, the T-Bolt, and the Will-O-Wisp. I don't have the Hex on this set. I feel like the Shadow Ball would be better. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory. I have enough speed to outspeed a Jolly Sneasel. Um, which is the fastest thing on his team, so I don't need to outspeed anything else. Um, it's gonna take on Manaphy. This thing is really just a safe haven if he has Manaphy and if he gets enough damage off on my team, if he sets up a Tail Glow or something like that, I can Volt Switch out in the T-Bowl, I can take it out, which is good. Um, Will-O-Wisp as well, so I can burn the Mien Shao possibly, as well as burn the Tyrantrum if necessary. I can burn the Sneasel if necessary. Um, Tornadus if it's physical. The Skarmory, if, if, if necessary, the Crest, just to get off damage. Um, and then the Shadow Ball really hits everything on his team except for the Mega Audino. So that's, um, if I get rid of the Mega Audino, then my Shadow Ball will be able to basically do a lot of damage to everything. Nothing's going to want to switch in on it. I don't care if your Cresselia is a special defensive set, it just stabs super effective Shadow Ball off a modest Rotom. It's going to be doing a lot. And if he's a specially defensive Cresselia, then it's not going to wall my... Megalopony like it has to, so I think it'll be physically defensive, which means Shadow Ball will be doing even more. Going off to my next mon is one I'm pretty happy with, actually. Um, it's my Gothitelle. Now, I have a Choice Scarf Gothitelle with Trick, Psy Shock, T-Bolt, and Calm Mind. What this thing is meant to do, it's, it's speed, it's not enough to outspeed a Manaphy. Reason being is I wanted as much HP investment as I could on it, because I have a specific plan with this thing. It's going to be doing a couple things for me. His first job is to trap and kill the Skarmory if possible. There's a possibility he's going to have the Shed Shell on his, like on the Skarmory, but the Gothitelle has a T-Bolt for that. 
um, as well as I can tank a hit off, off the mana feed if it's not plus three, obviously. Um, and I can T bolt and I can be doing a lot of damage. Actually, I don't, I don't know if I can take a plus three, but I didn't count that. Um, I'm it might actually be able to because of just the in general bulk it has and the scald, but to be honest, it is a, it is a mana feed at plus three, so possibly not. But I, I have the T bolt for the skarmory, um, and the mana fee and the tornadoes if necessary. But there's other job as a choice scarfer is to take a tail the needle king what it can do is if if i go into my needle queen or something like that and i set up my toxic spikes and i switch out and he has a needle king he's going to bring it in to absorb the toxic spikes now my goth hill can tank any hit from needle king take an earth power fire blast um sludge wave it can tank any with like about maybe 60 percent of damage on it and then i outspeed it i saw shock and i just clean oko it i think it has a very small chance of like of surviving but after rocks i think it's just an oko and its final plan is to trap the Cresselia, trick the Cresselia, and then call mind up to sweep. That's the final plan my Gothitelle has. Um, obtain the leftovers from it, go for call minds, and then possibly s s s sweep in the end game. Um, if all those plans work out with Gothitelle, then I think the game is ours with just one Pokemon. Because um, if all the plans work out, he's gonna, she, I'm sorry, she's gonna have killed a Skarmory, a, a Nido King, gone plus six on a Cresselia, and then that's already half his team. So then, so if this mom works out in the way I'm hoping it does, well then it's, it's pretty much a GG from there. Now the final mod, of course, you guys know I have to bring it. I have to bring the Megalopony just because of the fact that it's the fastest thing in the game between us right now. It outspeeds everything on his team. It outspeeds Manaphy, which if it goes plus six or, or, or it is plus three and it's a max speed set and for some reason my Rotom was either knocked off or it was caught in pursuit or something, I don't know, by Sneasel, then I do have my Megalopony here. And this Megalopony set's an interesting set. It's, a, it's an adamant set because I do not have to run Jolly to outspeed his team. Um, I have the high jump kick, obviously. I have the return, obviously. But then my next two moves are a little bit interesting. I have the power punch, revenge kill against like the Sneasel or something like that, to revenge kill the Tyrantrum, um, maybe the Yarmaldo. I don't know. Um, I also have the Encore. Now, what this does is... If his Cresselia is getting low enough, it's at like maybe 50%, and I go into my Megalopony, he might want a Moonlight on my return. If he goes for Moonlight, I Encore him into Moonlight, and I proceed to power a punch up, and then win the game from there. Another plan I have is a very last-ditch plan, if necessary, where I'm in a situation where the only way I can win is with this Megalopony sweep. What I could do is go into Bronzong on like Cresselia or something like that, and I can proceed to weaken it with Gyro Ball after going for a heal block. Um, this can also happen on the, on the Skarmory, well not on the Skarmory as much because of Brave Bird, but on, on the Cresselia. Right as soon as the heal block wears off, he will want to Moonlight up because at this point it would have taken my Gyro Balls and everything that is possibly was burned from my Rotom. It's going to want to heal up. It's going to switch into Megalopony on the heal, Encore it and proceed to power punch with sweep, as well as wish protect from from the Mega Auto. Now I can encore it into protect or wish. All in all, it's uh, it's gonna be a really interesting set to have. Now I do have just plain 252 speed, 252 attack, pretty standard set. Just being, if he wants to run a Scarfer to outspeed it, I want him to have to run max speed on the Scarfer, the most highest possible thing, um, as well as, I believe with 252, I outspeed Tyrantrum, and I outspeed an, an adamant Tyrantrum after plus one. Not a jolly, but an adamant one, because to be honest, I didn't think he'd bring Tyrantrum just because of the checks I have, as well as I do have Choice Scarf Rotom, Choice Scarf Gothitelle, even though I don't think Gothitelle outspeeds, Choice Scarf Rotom, the Bandit Scizor, and I have the also the Bronze Song to handle it, if necessary. So, um... That's the team, guys. This is the team we will be using to take down the Boston Red Sox. And I do say take down because we are going to take them down. We are going to win. We, we, we just have to win. We have to prove that we are not a middle-class team. We are a top-tier th threat. And the squad that was doubted, the squad that everyone says was one of the worst drafts, is going to be 
rising up to the challenge and taking on the squad that people arguably said was one of the best drafts. Now, we are going to see what happens tomorrow, guys. I'm Seb Tom, here, George D. Coach of the San Francisco Arcanives, and I want you to flare blitz that like button, really show your support, and, well, guys, that's me in the video. So if you enjoyed, please comment, like, rate, and subscribe. I'm Sep Thomas here, George D. Coach of your San Francisco Arcaniners, and peace out.